Hey guys, how you doing? Welcome back. So, today we're going to be looking at modular engines, how to get them set up, and all the things you need to know. So, let's get right into it. Okay, so to get started, I'm going to come into the inventory and search up modular engines, and under this tab we have all the parts that we're going to be using. So, to start off, you're going to need your crankshaft. There are multiple sizes of crankshafts, up to 5x5, five five, but I'm just going to do a simple 1x1 one one engine. I'm going to orientate this, say, in a inline four. I'm going to come here and I'm going to grab my modular engine cylinder. And you'll notice on the crankshaft itself, there is a specific shape that complements the bottom of the cylinder. And so you guessed it, they're uh, going straight on there. Okay, and a thing with the crankshafts as well, they have their own... Um, specific shape which they must connect with it's this more circular shape um, has to connect with the circular shape on another crankshaft there are many orientations to this of all different sizes and they all have different power outputs and depending on how many cylinders you have you might produce more power but consume more fuel so you might want to think about that so next to get all our pumps and our starters and things like that, we're going to add a crankshaft straight onto the end of our cylinders. This is also going to provide another specific shape that's complementary to um, a few belt driven components, such as our starter here. This is with a more traditional just toggle button starter, but you could also use a clutch with a motor. Um, to drive it but that simply goes on there and as you can see it has a bottom which is same shape as the crankshaft now there are two more things we can fit on here and that's going to be an alternator which is essentially a generator in itself just to keep the battery charge of the engine going there's also a pump which is driven by the belt and that has a fluid in and fluid out and we'll be using that right now for the coolant so to flush coolant through your engine you're going to want a coolant manifold and this will go on your cylinder see there is another four circle shape on there and what we can do is actually connect our fluid on here to let's say we use a radiator for this i'm going to use my pipes and i'm going to grab I'm going to search up. I'm going to grab a normal radiator here. And the two outputs are going to complete our loop here. And this is the same on normal engines and like that. So there's no specific way, coolant A, B, it doesn't matter which way they're looped up. Um, you're just creating a simple loop. You can use any coolant design that you like. Um, but what I'm going to do is for ease pull this out a little bit and I'll give it a specific color okay so next up is gonna be our fuel and so we'll grab a fuel manifold here and I'll simply take that from a medium tank I'll put it over here straight up into there no pumps required for this right now and this will just simply travel in there by itself next up is air and similarly to the fuel we're going to put that on our cylinder and that's going to have a air intake and I'm going to use an air filter but you could use um, any of these um, just remember though that the scoop intake will have better intakes at higher speeds okay and the last of the essential connections on our engine here is going to be exhaust and there are two manifolds for exhaust one is a curved design and the other is straight. Um, doesn't matter which one you use. I'm going to add an exhaust block onto the end of that. You could use a fluid port as well. And we'll give that a nice color as well. Okay, now, one thing I should note is that with cylinders, um, I've placed them down here so that they actually connect it to each other. So I only need one set of connections for my entire engine here but to say if i were to have something like this where i have two pairs of cylinders that are connected these would transfer air fuel and all that between each other 
but they would also be separate to these this power over here so what we can do is use manifold blocks and these are essentially just transfers and similar to pipes they can transfer all our key requirements um, throughout the engine and its cylinders okay now to get some power out of our engine I'm going to grab a clutch block I'm going to use the one by one again and uh, what we'll do is say get a propeller on the end of there just so we can have something that moves nice so that is all the connections on the engine completed and let's get to controlling it okay so in the logic tab up here we have a few connections we need to make to get this running so we have throttle here for fuel as well as air and these are independent of each other and I'll show you um, what we need to do with those in a minute we also have the clutch pressures for our pumps and our alternators and things and we have the starter here everything else on this board that you can see are outputs for information but I won't bother connecting those up in this video so to get numbers off to our manifolds I'm going to be using two throttle levers they take numbers between 0 and 1 and conveniently our levers have a default of that so I'm going to label one of these fuel and one of those air and I'm going to simply just connect those up directly I'm also going to get a push button for the starter like that and I'm going to label that as well and then what I'm going to do is grab a constant number as we have some clutch pressures that I want to keep constant so I'll have them fully engaged all the time with a constant number of one finally I'm going to power everything up to a battery that I had over here right so with our fuel and air there if you're looking at the cylinder itself we have a few values that we have to take into account and that is going to be the air fuel ratio and the stoichiometric these are going to dictate how well our engine is running is it too rich or too lean um, because we have to get the fuel to air mixture um, completely right if we want the best performance so generally what I like to do is have the air at full and maybe half fuel we'll start with half or around half and see how it runs like that so I'm gonna hit the starter there we go and as you can see it's actually started running and you'll see that we have a stoichiometric of 0.2 let's say and what we can do is say maybe increase our fuel oh that's too far that's gone up a little bit what we want to do is get this as close to zero you can see as it's gone down the engine has suffered a bit in performance but okay that's, that's better that's 0.11 but yes our engine is running and it's doing quite nice now to say if you don't want to constantly be adjusting your air and fuel on two levers and you just want to have it on one um, what I'm gonna do over here is actually create this again but in a, in a different way here and this can work on one lever but I'm gonna use two to calibrate it and so what we'll have is our main throttle this time but on this one I'm gonna have a calibration for my ratio and what we can do is get a divide block the throttle is going to be divided by the calibration throttle and what we'll do is say the calibration will start at 2 and we'll have a max of 3 and a minimum of 0 and we'll adjust this a little bit and if you remember uh, we had almost a half ratio between these so what's going to happen is the throttle is going to come in it's going to get divided by 2 um, as default and that's going to send off to the fuel and what we can do for the air is it's going to be double so that's just going to go straight to the air there and we'll hit the starter again make sure everything is powered by the way and we'll get some throttle and as you can see it's running nice and it's pretty much the same 
0.18 as I had before with fuel at half which is what we can expect but now we can simply calibrate this much easier by adjusting our ratio lever as you can see we've got it to pretty much perfect um, efficiency of 14.4 ratio of your AFR and yeah that's gonna be pretty much perfect that's yeah so guys hope you found that tutorial useful if you want any more tutorials on anything then be sure to comment down below and I'll give it a go um, but yeah I want to thank you for watching obviously leave a like and subscribe it really helps out and uh, I'll catch you in the next one